What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. Today I'm going to be talking about the situational judgment section on the UK cat. Also, your boy got a new haircut. I finally got rid of that huge helmet, that wolf-like hair that I had on my head before. You guys already know how this video is going to work. I'm going to go through some general tips about situational judgment that I think are really useful. And then I'm going to put myself in the corner of the screen and solve questions on camera live so that you guys can see my thought process and see the kind of things that I'm thinking about when going through these questions. Recently, a lot of you guys have been asking for a Q&A, sort of so you can get a better insight to who I am, where I come from, my background, things like that. So if you have any questions at all, academically related, personal related, medical school related, whatever it is, feel free to leave a comment on this video or any of the videos in the future, and I'm gonna be doing a Q&A soon. Also follow me on my Instagram page, you guys can ask me questions there, not only for the Q&A, but about anything that you like. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So the situational judgment section is supposed to test your integrity, your honesty, your ability to work in teams, things of that nature, sort of the non-academic aspects that are required to be a doctor and to practice medicine. A lot of the situational judgment section is gonna revolve around medical ethics or moral dilemma. So you want to make sure that you have those things down. If you don't know, the four pillars of medical ethics are autonomy, uh, beneficence, non-malevolence, and justice. Let's have a quick rundown of what those things mean. Autonomy means that the patient is completely within their right to decide what they want to do with their body, what they want to do with their course of treatment, and to make decisions on their own if competent. Beneficence means that you want to do good and you have the intentions to do good. Non-malevolence is that you have the intention to not do harm. You don't want to do something that could cause harm. And justice is that you provide equality and treatment for all, regardless of their ethnicity, background, color, whatever it is. It's equal treatment for all people. Now, specifically for situational judgment, something that is extremely, extremely useful is a document by the GMC, which is the General Medical Council, if you don't know. It's a document by them called Tomorrow's Doctors. And this document kind of outlines what it expects of doctors in the future, how it expects them to act, what it expects them to do. And having a good read of that is gonna be something that can really help in solving situational judgment questions. I'm gonna put a link to that document in the description down below, so definitely click on that. In the very least, have a skim read through it. You definitely wanna be aware of the sort of things that they talk about in that document. It covers different topics from respecting the rights of your patient, not abusing your power as a doctor, and a whole list of other things that are very, very common and come up in situational judgment sections. Now keep in mind that the situational judgment section doesn't require any medical knowledge. The way that these questions are marked is that you get partial points if you're close to the correct answer and then full points if you are on the correct answer. So first and foremost, when answering situational judgment questions, you wanna decide which part of the extreme spectrum you're on. Are you on the, this is a very important consideration or this is not important at all? Because if you decide that, then at least you can get partial marks and then you can try and figure out how extreme you wanna be. Is this very, very important or just important? How they decide what the right answer is for a situational judgment question is that they pose this question to a panel of doctors and the doctors all give their opinion and whatever the most popular opinion is, is what is considered right. So it's not always gonna be 100%. There, you can't really say that answer A is definitively a million percent correct. It's what a majority of doctors said that they would do if they were in that situation when questioned on a panel. So yeah, in my opinion, the best way to study for situational judgment is to do lots and lots of questions. You're gonna see over and over again the same sort of themes, the same sorts of questions come up. So once you start to recognize those patterns over time, you can figure out what the answer is really easily. All right guys, before we get into the questions, I wanna tell you a little bit about Medify. Medify is a UK cat resource question bank that I've been using for the last little while to prepare myself for the decision-making and situational judgment videos. On the homepage, you can see here what your performance is against other students taking Medify so you know if you're performing at an average level, below average or above average. If you're someone who relies on doing lots and lots of practice like myself, and like I always tell you guys in every one of my UK CAT videos, I honestly think this is really useful. You can see for every section there's hundreds of questions to do, and when you're done practicing, you can check your performance, how are you doing in each of the sections? So there you can see your weaknesses, you can see where you need to improve, where, where you should focus more of your time. And you can also track your history too, to see if you're keeping up with the schedule that you set for yourself, if you're slacking and you probably need to do more studying. After you've done a bunch of practice, you can go take the mock exams. So they actually have four mini mock exams for each section and then seven full mock exams. This is honestly more mocks than you'll ever need to do in my opinion. The mocks are really useful because it'll help you practice your timing. You'll have a set amount of questions to do in a set amount of time and that'll make you really focus and harness down on your ability to do questions under pressure. So yeah guys, if Medify is something that you might be interested in, if you need that extra practice to excel you in the UK cat, 
feel free to check out their website. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, now having said all of that for the general tips, let's jump straight into the questions. Okay guys, so I've got my computer down here. I'm gonna be reading the question and saying out loud or focusing on what I think are the most important words or the most important pieces of information. And then from there, I'm gonna go on to tackling the questions. Question one, a medical student, Satnam, is working on a busy, busy hospital ward. An elderly patient, Mr. Adams, has been discharged that morning and is getting ready to go home. Mr. Adams has difficulty walking. As Mr. Adams is leaving the hospital, Satnam observes him taking a pair of crutches that have been left unattended, okay? Satnam knows that a doctor must provide authorization in order for crutches to be removed from the hospital. He also knows that authorization has not been provided in this case. So how important to take into account are the following considerations for Satnam? So, that Mr. Adams should not leave the hospital with crutches that have not been properly authorized. Okay, so directly from the passage, we know that you require proper authorization in order to take the crutches. So this question is saying, how important is it that we get proper authorization? Well, I would definitely argue if first we're gonna decide which half of the scale this is on, this is definitely on the important side of the scale. The passage directly says, crutches need to be authorized. This is saying how important is it that crutches are authorized. So I would go for very important in this case. That no one else appears to have observed Mr. Adams taking the crutches without them being authorized. This is not important at all, okay? So when a bad act happens, when something negative happens that could jeopardize, jeopardize the public's opinion of medicine or could jeopardize a patient's health, whether or not someone saw that act occurring is totally unimportant. And this comes up so many times over and over again. Note this down. Whether someone sees a bad act happening has no relevance to the fact that a bad act has occurred because it's still gonna have the same consequences. It could still affect patient health, patient safety, which is always number one. So this is always a non-important at all. Make sure you write that down. Next question. Okay, new paragraph. Before we start the new paragraph, um, I recently made a video where I was giving away my UK cat notes and I told you guys to send me an email there and I would send it to you. I've now put a link in the descriptions that you can download them directly. I think that I have some really, really good notes in there for the situational judgment section, so I would highly recommend checking it out. I'll put a link to that download link in the description here as well and I'll link you to the video. Question number two. Dr. Wright works in a hospital. How important is it that she is confident about the competence of the surgeon? I think that that's something that's very important. Obviously, competency of the surgeon is gonna be something that's extremely important in deciding if the surgeon should do the surgery and it's gonna help the patient decide if they want that specific surgeon to do the surgery on them. Um, so I would definitely say that this is on the important half of the scale. Whether that's very important or important, if we know that the surgeon is competent, this is something that's objective about them if they've had successes in the past. So I'm gonna go with very important. How important is it that she has no evidence that the surgeon has been insensitive to women? This is very important. And this is also a topic that comes up over and over again. I remember now from a year and a half ago when I took this exam, this, this theme comes up very, very often. If you don't have evidence of rumors, if you don't have evidence of um, something bad having happened, if allegations are being made, it's very important to not believe those allegations straight away. If someone is slandering someone or someone has said something crazy has happened or some person did something really bad, it's really important not to take that as truth immediately. You have to assess all the evidence you get. You need to check for yourself. You need to know for yourself. The fact that she has no evidence that the surgeon has been insensitive is definitely important. That telling Natalie about the rumors may affect Natalie's confidence in the surgeon. This is also very important. If we confirm to Natalie like, oh yeah, the rumors are true or maybe they're true, then that's gonna affect how Natalie thinks of the surgeon. That's gonna affect how Natalie speaks about that surgeon and that could go on to influence his reputation. So definitely telling Natalie about the rumors, I would say is, is not a good idea and it is of great importance in this situation. Okay, so the third question. How important is it that if she does not inform Ms. Chopra again about the risks associated with her pregnancy, Ms. Chopra may decide to become pregnant for a fifth time and become unwell? This is clearly very important. We know that she's already once not uh, taken into account the information that the doctor gave her and she's gone against the recommendation of not getting pregnant because it puts her at an increased risk and she is now at an increased risk. So we wanna make sure that the patient actually understood what the doctor told them the first time, if they realized the amount of harm that they could be causing themselves, and we wanna make sure that they don't get pregnant again as that could further increase harm to the, the patient. Always remember that first and foremost in these questions, the number one thing is 
maintaining patient safety, minimizing patient harm, that's like at the very top of the pyramid of important things that you wanna do in these questions and what you wanna prioritize. Patient health and safety is absolutely number one. Patients or the public's view in medicine is also something quite up there that's important, but number one is patient health and safety. How important is it that the information about the risks to Ms. Chopra's health is provided to her in a respectful and caring way? Again, very important. If you're ever giving information to a patient about the risks of their health, you always want to do this in a respectful and caring way. This question should be quite obvious and hopefully it is quite obvious. You never want to give someone information in a disrespectful way. The Ms. Chopra is provided with sufficient information for her to be able to make an informed decision about whether to become pregnant again. If we go back to what I said at the beginning of this video, one of the four pillars of medicine is autonomy. The patient should always have the ability to make their own informed decision. And this question is directly saying that we want to give her enough information for her to make her own informed decision. This is 100% very important and definitely needs to happen. Ms. Chopra's entitlement to be able to make her own decisions about her health and lifestyle. This is basically a question about the same thing, autonomy. Um, Ms. Chopra definitely needs to have autonomy and this question is saying that we will give it to her, so this is very important. Okay, next question. Medical students Lucy and Carl These are two friends, or maybe they're not friends, but they're two students in a classroom and that's important to take into account. Always know if it's two students, if it's a doctor and a student, if it's a lecturer and a doctor, if it's a patient and a doctor. You always need to remember the roles of who we're talking about here because that comes into importance in the questions. So, how important is it that hospital policy should be adhered to? Hopefully this is extremely simple and easy for you to answer. Obviously very important. Hospital policy is there for a reason. Rules and regulations are in place for a reason and they should always be adhered to. That she does not know whether Carl has been given permission to record the tutorial. Again, I would say this is very important. Let's analyze why. If Carl does know that he has not been given permission to record and he is recording, then he is knowingly and willingly doing something incorrect and he should definitely be told and that's something that needs to change. If Carl has no idea that he shouldn't be recording this session and he hasn't been given permission and he's recording the session, again, he should be told, but that makes his intention very different and that is extremely important. So whether Carl knows that he's breaking the policies or not is gonna be very important. And the patient's right to confidentiality. Do I really need to explain this? <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, patient confidenti confidentiality is ex of extreme, extreme importance. Always preserve patient confidentiality unless absolutely necessary. And there's a series of, of times when breaking patient confidentiality is okay, um, but certainly this is not one of them. The fact that patient identifiable information is mentioned during the tutorial. Again, obviously very important. If patient identifiable information was not mentioned during the tutorial, then this wouldn't be an issue because it says in the passage that you're allowed to discuss tutorials as long as the lecture grants permission and patients are not discussed. So if there was no patient name, then this doesn't even matter. The fact that a patient name is mentioned or patient identifiable material is mentioned is definitely important. Okay, new question. Lee and Chris are working as junior doctors together. They do really interesting scenario. So the crux of this question is that it's affecting patient health and safety. It says in the passage that when dealing with patients, he's made some mistakes. This is like the key important thing you need to take away from this passage, okay? His personal life and personal issues affecting patients. How important is it that Chris's behavior at work could increase the workload for other staff? I would say this is important on the direction of important or not, or not important. How important this is, I'm not really sure. So look, Chris's behavior could increase the workload of other staff, okay. So if Chris is slacking or if Chris is making mistakes or if Chris is not paying attention to what he's doing, that's, that, is, that is an important thing and that's going to have important consequences on other people working around him that are gonna to have to make up for that. So I would definitely go with that least important. Whether it's very important or not, I don't think this is the most important part of this question. It is important, but the, the crux of this question, the most important part is that patient safety is being jeopardized. So I'm just gonna go with important, not with very important. The fact that Chris has made some mistakes when dealing with patients is of utmost importance. It's the most important part of this whole question is that his personal life is now affecting patients, affecting health and safety of patients. So very important. That Chris has been irritable with patients. Again, very important. 
the patient's perspective of the doctors around them and the patient's perspective of the field of medicine as a whole is something that needs to be preserved as best as possible. And if you are talking to patients in a way that does not reflect the utmost best values that doctors are supposed to hold and preserve, then that is definitely very important. That Chris has been irritable with members of staff, again, this is, this is also very important. You don't want to be irritable with, with anyone. If you have personal problems, if you're going through something that's totally okay and personal problems and emotions happen all the time, being irritable with other members of staff is something that's not professional at all. And if a patient were to see two members of staff bickering with each other or being disrespectful to each other, that's definitely not gonna help preserve the image of the field of medicine. One sec. Let's move on to the second type of question that comes up in situational judgment section, which is about the appropriateness of specific actions. Simon is a medical student. How appropriate are each of the following responses by Simon in this situation? Assume that the following responses would be said politely. So, okay, that's also something important to consider how the responses are said, because you could misinterpret the tone just from reading. So keep in mind that this is being said politely. Dear Cecilia, you are part of the committee. I would never deliberately exclude you in any way. That is super important to say. First things first, you wanna make it clear to Cecilia that this was something that was unintentional. I didn't do this on purpose to you. Let's try and find out what happened. So very important, or sorry, very appropriate. Second thing, we should look into what arrangements can be made for when people are not able to make the meetings on time. Okay, that sounds pretty pretty good. Like people are gonna be unable to make meetings all the time for whatever different reasons. Some family emergency came up, my brother needed help, my friend needed help, I'm feeling sick, I wasn't having a good day, whatever. People are gonna be unable to make meetings all the time. So being able to set some sort of infrastructure that gets around that problem, for example, Skyping in or uh, being sent the meeting notes or giving your input through text is something that is, should definitely be done. So yeah, I would say this is a very appropriate thing to say. I'm sorry, can I ask why you feel that I deliberately excluded you from the meeting? The first thing I'll take away from this statement is that this isn't inappropriate. This isn't a bad thing to say. This isn't going to cause any problems. So the bottom C and D are gonna be canceled. And then I'll have to decide if this is A or B. This definitely isn't wrong of Simon to say, but it might also might not be the best thing. Like this could cause her to just, you know, get mad. I don't know, I'm gonna go with appropriate, but not ideal. There's definitely better things you can say in this situation, like some of the things that we saw previously. I'm sorry, I thought you would have known that the doors are locked at 6.15. That's a super appropriate thing to say. This is like, a, this is a pure fact, you know, like the doors close at 6.15. This is something that I guess you should have known, but he's not saying it in that way. He's saying, I thought you knew, or I thought you should, I thought you would have known um, that the doors are locked at this time. So I think that's totally appropriate. And yeah, it's a good piece of information to say, because if she didn't know that, now she does. And there's no reason for this whole argument. That's something that she should have been aware of. Next question. Okay, next question. So, complete the assigned personal tasks for Margaret without mentioning that they do not seem to be related to his development. I think in this case, who is it, Sen? Sen definitely wants to let Margaret know that this is not what he's supposed to be doing. Sen is here to learn and to develop and to experience clinical things, and so that's what he wants to do. So if he just completes these tasks without mentioning anything, then maybe Margaret will think that he's okay with doing that and he won't be able to get the full learning experience that he wants. So if he just does these tasks without mentioning, that's, I think that's an inappropriate thing to do, but I wouldn't say that's like very, very inappropriate. This isn't gonna have negative impacts on, on their relationship or on patient health and safety. So I would say this is inappropriate, but not awful. Suggest to Margaret examples of more clinical tasks that he could get involved with during the attachment. I think this is definitely an appropriate thing to do. Sen wants to improve his clinical learning, his clinical development, and that's what he's here to do. That's what he's here to learn. Seek advice from the academic tutor responsible for the learning attachment. I think that's definitely very appropriate, and I'll tell you guys why. This is another one of those things that comes up over and over and over again, seeking advice. Almost always when seeking advice, this is a very appropriate thing to do asking someone for help, asking someone for their input, someone who's older, someone who's more mature, someone who is supposed to be overlooking what you're doing is always gonna be appropriate. If you're unsure, you should be asking for help. You should be seeking advice. Um, so I definitely, definitely think this is a very appropriate thing to do. And if I remember correctly, this is also included in my notes. If you haven't downloaded them already, links in the description. Okay, new question. 
Tell the patient to inform the senior doctor how his behavior makes patients feel the next time this occurs. Who are we? Who's Cameron? Cameron's a medical student. So I feel like maybe it's more important that the medical staff, like medical students or other doctors, tell the doctor that his behavior may not be appropriate. I don't think it's okay. It's not a bad thing if the patients do this themselves. In fact, if a patient does this, that it should be a real wake-up call for the doctor to reevaluate their actions and how they're behaving. But yeah, I, I think I think this is appropriate. So, if if you're a medical student, you can tell the patient like, hey, this might be something you might want to bring up with your doctor so that they're aware. This can cause an, a, the beginning of a conversation where hopefully the doctor can change this kind of behavior. Seek advice from another senior member of staff about the senior doctor's behavior. What did I just say about seeking advice? Seeking advice is almost always gonna be a very appropriate thing to do. Discuss the situation with peers to find out what they would do in that situation. I think this is appropriate, but there's a balance. And this is the, this is the reason I'm not gonna put very appropriate. So again, discussing with someone, seeking advice from someone, talking to someone is almost always gonna be a good thing. However, in this situation, you don't sort of wanna spread this bad information about the doctor, right? Even though it's with peers, with other medical students, or maybe this is not other medical students, this could be friends outside of medical school. But I think the point is the same. If you wanna ask for advice, you can maybe ask one or two friends in private, ask for their opinion, see if they can give you a different perspective. But this is definitely something you don't wanna be like spreading around. So the act here of asking for advice or talking to someone else about what they would do, I don't think is bad, but you also don't wanna like go out and spread that information as fact or just let everyone know. So I would say appropriate, but not ideal. But this is kind of tricky. But I, I think B is a pretty pretty good response. Okay, next question. Medical student Gemma, Gamma, Gamma rays, <laughs> Gemma, Gemma. Okay, so something super super bad has occurred. Patient allergies, some of the most important things you need to note down and be aware of. It's one of the first things on a patient's medical chart. There's like a huge section that says like allergies, and if not, you write no known adverse reactions. I believe. NKDA or something like that. But anyway, this is a very, very important piece of information and the fact that the doctor write, wrote no when she said yes is of huge importance. So, before I read the question, this is definitely something that the doctor needs to know and he needs to know soon, okay? Whether this is corrected directly in front of the patient or after the patient is up for debate and I would probably say that after is maybe more appropriate. Um, let's see what the questions are, but before we start the question, this definitely has to be changed. Inform Dr. Mitchell once the patient has left the room that he appears to have made an error with the computer record. 100%, 100% like this is the most appropriate thing to do. You maybe don't want to do it while the patient is sitting there because you don't want to undermine the confidence that the patient has in the doctor, um, but you have to let the doctor know. And once the patient has left the room is a great time to do this, so very appropriate. Change the computer record after Dr. Mitchell and the patient have left the room to avoid Dr. Mitchell being embarrassed. Okay, I think this is very inappropriate and I'm gonna explain why. Although it says to avoid Dr. Mitchell being embarrassed, which like you might think is a good thing, you don't wanna embarrass the doctor in front of the patient, which is kind of true, but this is super, super wrong. A, you're changing information when you're not authorized, but anyway, you're doing it without telling the doctor, which has two problems. A, the doctor is unaware that this change has been made. B, it's being made without his permission. And this is like definitely a huge no-no. You definitely need to inform the doctor in a respectful way, in a nice, kind way, um, but they need to know and they need to make the change themselves. Ask the patient to repeat this, his answer to the question. <laughs> That's kind of cheeky. It's like, it's like saving the doctor in the situation without embarrassing him. It's kind of like when your best friend says something stupid when you're out and they're talking to someone who they're interested in and you kind of try and butt in to fix their response or to ask another question to change the topic. I think this is a pretty similar analogy. Um, so yeah, I'd say this is appropriate. Like you can say, oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat it, please? The patient will repeat their answer. The doctor will hopefully notice this time and change his input. So yeah, I think this is pretty appropriate, but definitely talking to the doctor after is gonna be the better thing to do. A dental student, Rio is legal. You're the team captain or the team leader of the group and another member has come to you with complaints about a third member which is totally possible. This happens all the time in group projects. So let's see what's going on. How appropriate is it to take no action unless further complaints are received from other members of the group? 
I would say that this is definitely inappropriate. A complaint has been brought up, something has been said, there is a disagreement, and it should definitely be addressed. Um, to dismiss this complaint and ignore it until something else happens means that more bad things could keep happening in the meantime. So this is definitely inappropriate. You definitely want to take action on this. Is this a very inappropriate thing to do? I think the answer very inappropriate is reserved for when you're causing negative harm or you're causing um, like very big consequences to happen, um, which I don't think this action would. So I'm gonna say inappropriate, but not awful. Next question. Suggest to Jerome that he raises his concerns with Elizabeth directly. I definitely think this is a good idea. And I think this is like, I think this should be the first course of action to be taken. The, the team captain is there to sort of oversee these things and to make sure that everything is going okay. But I think first things first, a direct conversation between the two parties involved might be the best way to go about this. Next question, speak to Elizabeth directly to raise concerns about the time and effort she's dedicating to the group project. Definitely, definitely appropriate. First of all, you're directly speaking to Elizabeth. You're not going through other people, which is definitely good. And you're directly raising concerns about the things that the other team member was concerned about. So you're working towards solving the problem. You're making actions. You're taking initiative to solve this problem. So I think it's a very appropriate thing to do. I think I'm gonna stop there. I've currently been recording for about 40 minutes. So I need to cut this down. I need to make it down into an appropriate length for you guys to see. But I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you were able to make use of my thought process and logic as I went through these questions. Don't forget to ask me lots of questions for the Q&A. Leave them in a comment down below. You can leave them on my Instagram page as well. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the fourth in the series. Can't believe I've made four of these now. And yeah, guys, take care. Happy revision. I know a lot of your exams are coming up really soon. So good luck, good luck, good luck. Practice hard. And I hope you guys do well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.